So, um, hello everyone and welcome to uh, this episode of Ross A. Bespoke Butler School. Now, I've got a very special guest today. Uh, he's a gentleman that I've um, been looking forward to interviewing for a while now. It's uh, Nathan Little. Um, he's a man who's uh, smoked more cigars than uh, Colonel John Hannibal Smith. Um, so, I've got him here with me tonight and I do love it when a plan comes together. Um, Nathan, he is an enthusiastic cigar expert, I think that's, um, to put it mildly, um, a popular figure in the industry, and to be honest, when it comes to field sports and cigars, there's only one name you need to know, and this is the gentleman right here, so thank you very much for joining me. Simeon, thank you very much for having me, it's, uh, it's, it's been a pleasure, and uh, sorry for the the delay tonight, as I say, well, no problem at all. Give me some another drink. Working. So, so I'll, uh, cheers to that. Yeah. Sure having, I'm having one as well. I think it's I think it's an appropriate hour anyway. So it um, is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Unlike most TV shows, we're, we're actually filming on time. I think, aren't we? We're not filming during the middle of the day and drinking. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no. Thank you very much for having me. No, thank you. So. Um, Let's, um, let's start with some questions. Um, now, cigars is, is it, it can be something that um, people sort of work themselves up and is it too, is it too expensive, it's something they don't know. So my first question to you would be, if someone wants to buy and smoke cigars, but they've got no idea how to start, um, what would your advice be? You see, when, when when you when you say cigars to people the first thing that pops into their head is that sort of cliche image of a, a cuban cigar after all you know cuba is the place for cigars mm -hmm. equally there are so many alternatives to a cuban cigar that actually in terms of cost um are a far a far more economical than a cuban cigar but sticking to cubans that's just so let's you know for the sake of keeping it simple there's, there's a variety of cigars there that really can start people off at a very modest level, but still have amazing flavors and amazing tastes to them without, you know, without breaking the bank. Um, and I think, I think the, the, the important thing for getting into cigar smoking is, first of all, establish what you actually like in terms of, do you want something that's quite um, full in flavor, mild or, you know, or, or, or medium bodied cigar. Um, it's, it's something that whenever, whenever somebody that's new to cigar smoking, um, when, they, when they approach me, if, or if, if they approach me and ask me the question of what to start with and where to start, um, I'd always say, go with a mild cigar first and build up over the course of time and, and look for something that's not too large, um, you know, that, that's manageable. It's not too, not the cliche sort of huge cigar because chances are you won't finish it. Um, <laughs> And build up from there, and actually, this you know you can get some quite modest, modestly priced cigars. Um, I st I tend to start with well, people like to have a a chunky cigar in their mouth, but you know because it's that they, they like the image of cigar smoking. Um, you know, you could start off with something like a a petty Romeo Jeff a petty Churchill from Romeo Julieta, mild in flavour, relatively short, but still has that sort of image of. If you're smoking it, people go, "Oh yeah, he's he, he's smoking a cigar. He's 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 quite cool." Because the reality of it is, a lot of a lot of people that get into cigar smoking that I come across, they like the image, they like the the Al Capone image, they like the Churchill image, the you know, because it, you know, it has a certain thing about it. Um, and in terms of cost, you know, you can start off seventeen, eighteen pounds a cigar, something like that. You know, it's never going to be cheap, cheap in terms of a pack, in comparison to say a packet of cigarettes. But you're not a, you're you're there for an experience, and you're not going to be smoking them necessarily super prolifically. So it's not going to it's not going to necessarily break the bank. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, that's so that makes me think. So you can start with a, a cigar that's not that expensive, but is a really expensive cigar is that worth the money if you can afford it? Well, I think we had a little disruption in the signal there, but my question was, um, a really expensive cigar, if you can afford it, yeah. is it worth the money? Um, 
again, it depends to what you are. It, you know, if you're new to cigar smoking and you just want to spend a huge amount of money on cigars, it's your prerogative. But are you going to under necessarily understand the complexities of it? Um, the the reason why it's expensive and are you going to enjoy it more than a twenty pound cigar? Probably not, because you need to have that experience and that you know you need to try a few cigars to understand why each cigar is different. So, if somebody was new to it, would I say go and spend as much as you possibly can on a cigar? No, I wouldn't. No. I'd say I'd say build up, build your experience up, build your palate up. Um, learn to pair it with things and and more importantly learn to enjoy the cigars that you're that you're that you're smoking for the simple reason that you know as you begin to understand and, and take the time to uh, appreciate the cigar you can then progress on but it would just in my mind it would just be a waste of money for you to be new to cigar smoking and go and spend as much money as physically possible oh, excellent i mean that's really um that's really worth knowing and i think that that's going to make a lot of people feel a bit more confident because I think if people have got the idea in their head that they've got to go and buy the most expensive cigar to enjoy it, then it might just be a bit too prohibitive for them just dipping their toe in the water and having a go. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, there's no point in doing that. There are plenty of very, as I say, very modestly priced cigars out there mm -hmm. that will sort of give you the, give you the experience give you the give give you everything that a cigar wants but you've just got to understand you've got to enjoy them in the env environment and the atmosphere that they're designed to, to to be enjoyed and then progress forward um you know you can pick up some new world cigars as i say we won't go on to those too much because it it complexes things but things uh, so cigars made from nicaragua dominican republic um and and, and as such which are very, they're called new world cigars. Um, they're modestly priced, but some of them can be absolutely amazing to smoke and a fraction of the price of Cuban cigars. So you can, you can vary your palate up with, with that quite easily and enjoy cigars at very much, you know, you enjoy cigars much more often by mixing it up a little bit, not always smoking Cuban cigars, but trying something a little bit different as well. That's um, absolutely fascinating. I mean, I, th I mean, I, I enjoy a cigar myself, um, but um, it's, you know, it's something that um, I, I enjoy, enjoy occasionally, shall I say. So it's not, um, you know, it's still another world for me. So it's still fascinating to hear this from you. Um, it's remind I mean, as a young butler, it was standard practice um, at the end of every single dinner, we would bring out the humidor. Um, we put the ashtrays on the table and well, and every gentleman, not like to be sexist, but it was true. Every gentleman was smoke and the ladies tend to left, leave the room. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying I was a hundred years old. This was, this was what happened, you know, 10, 20 years ago. That seems to have changed. I mean, has that changed the industry? I mean, as far as I'm, I, I see it now, I don't see a huge amount of ladies smoking cigars still. You know, you you will get the occasional um, lady who wants to enjoy a cigar. Absolutely, it's probably more common now than it was 10, 15 years ago. But it is, in my in my view, still quite a, a male dominated. Um, I don't know whether you'd say pastime or or, 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 or enjoying <laughs> pleasure. It. Pleasure, exactly. Uh, that's but that's but um, because it's. I don't know whether or not that's down to the fact that cigars, I mean, I've got one here, which we'll go through in a minute. You know, they're, they're quite a, a hefty size cigar, some of them. Um, and particularly after dinner, if you have a quite a large, you know, it's not necessarily something that, you know, m m many ladies would enjoy. There are, as I say, there are the occasional lady that will enjoy a cigar. Um, yeah, they may go for the sort of smaller, the, the Panatella cigars, the thinner, the the the, the one that you, you <clears throat> people would uh, commonly sort of look at as the, sort of the Hamlet size cigar or the Cafe Creme. Uh -huh. That would perhaps more enjoyed more often by a lady. But again, you will, you know, some some ladies break the mould and and will will smoke, you know, other other larger cigars like these, the church a more Churchill size or something like that. 
but by and large it, it's it is it is still not commonplace to see a lady smoking um so yeah and so sort of to, on the same sort of question what about what do you think about the sort of um after dinner smoking i mean do you still yourself if you're out for a um a, a nice meal or around friend's house for a nice meal would you think of immediately cigar after dinner Ab absolutely i mean times have changed now <clears throat> um i mean uh, you know times have changed now where you could pro you know often sit in a uh, sit in a restaurant and uh, or more public establishment have dinner and smoke a cigar which i i'm actually quite <laughs> quite sad about because um you know there's something quite a sense of occasion to just sit down and not have to move and just enjoy the meal and the environment and the atmosphere that you are that you're you're comfortable in rather than going outside and having to smoke saying that having said that um being able to have a cigar after dinner yeah absolutely i mean there's a reason that i will as again i apologize for being late i was having i was having steak for dinner I always make a point if I'm if I'm having a particularly large cigar like I will be tonight, um, I always make a point of having something to line my stomach with. It's it for me it's crucial, and I would say for anybody that's especially if you're new to cigar smoking, um, always have something to eat before you smoke a cigar because it it, it unsettles your stomach. It's not nice, and and it and it sort of inhibits the enjoyment of the cigar. Um, so after dinner, I think it's a great time, often with a really, you know, bold red wine, perfect, or even as they say, a cognac or a whiskey, something like that, just to mellow the experience, relax it, and just to help sort of relax it, because it's not something that you should rush. Well, actually, that's because I've heard a few people in the past say to me that um, the reason they've always, and, and often they're people who are regular smokers, cigarette smokers, but they're worried about smoking cigars because they think it might make them feel sick. Um, you know, is that based on anything? Yeah, I think I think the reality that people are smoking, the, the people have that uh, preconception that they're going to be sick if they smoke cigars, if they're a cigarette smoker, is because they have the habit of inhaling. Mm. Um, with a cigarette, you inhale because you're wanting to take it into your lungs for a, a, a sort of nicotine, I don't smoke cigarettes, you see, um, but for that nicotine rush. Whereas with a cigar, you're, after, you're, you're smoking a cigar for the flavor. So the cigar should not realist, really be inhaled. It, it, the art of cigar smoking is to supply your mouth with fresh smoke on a regular basis. So that's why you'll see people, what I would call chuffing, and they would sort of, <laughs> sort of almost filter smoke through their mouth if you hold it into your mouth for too long it becomes stale and stagnant and you lose that flavor mm -hmm. um, and, the, and, the, and those and those notes very subtle notes within the cigar so people that smoke cigarettes have that natural almost instinct of take taking a cigar in inhaling it and that that the, you will see people coughing and spluttering when they've when they've done that so and it, and it runs the risk of them being, you know, feeling that nauseous feel, which is not pleasant. No. You know, when you first get into cigars, I've done it many a time where I've had a cigar, I've not eaten or I've not just rushed it through. And consequently, I feel rather, rather sickly afterwards. And it is the, it is the most horrible feeling. Mm -hmm. But like tonight, if you enjoy it, relax, prepare yourself for it very much so you will enjoy it and, 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 and be conscious of what's going on. You'll be, you'll be fine. Oh, that's excellent. I mean, one thing that I have noticed over the years, and maybe this is psychosomatic, you can tell me, um, but it seems to me that a cigar enhances the effects of alcohol. Would you say that's true? I would. I don't know whether some people would say that was, that was sort of in their, you know, sort of in their psych, psych, psych mm -hmm. you know, you know, a sort of, I don't know what the word would be. I can't yeah, psychosomatic it. sort of. Yeah, it's sort of, whether it's enhanced by the thought of that, I would tend to agree. You know, I'm having a martini with mine tonight, which is a little bit different to the sort of red wine that people would have or, or whiskey or whatnot. But, uh, you, you know, if, I think, I think when people get into the zone of being super relaxed, they've got a cigar, they've had a fabulous meal, and they've got a drink as well. 
I think it all com combines just to sort of bring, you know, to mellow you out, to relax you. Yeah. And I think that is that, that sort of mentality that people have that, oh, they feel a little bit more drunk. Yeah. Maybe that's, and I think also it will sort of relax you a little bit, open up the blood vessels maybe, you know, I, you know that's a thought process perhaps. But I would, I would tend to agree, but whether or not that's psychosomatic, I'm not sure. Hmm. That's really interesting. Maybe we should have got a scientist in as well, just to give us a, a purely you scientific. Have, you could have you could have somebody sit next to me here, just seeing if I slur my words increasingly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, so as you know, I've prepared a few questions for you. Um, so, um, so okay, is is if money is no object. Any cigar in the world, what would be your favourite? What would you choose? Personally, it's not necessarily the most expensive. It's, it's expensive, but it, it, you know, just in fact, I've just I've just sold a box of them. Um, they are personally my favourite cigar. They're called the Cohiba Robusto Supremos. Mm -hmm. They're from 2014. Um, they are a beautiful cigar. They're a particularly large cigar to come out of um, Cuba and the Cohiba factory. Um, in that there, I think there are 58 ring gauge, which is, which in comparison to other Cuban cigars is huge. I mean, uh -huh. I mean, I've got yeah. some, I've got some Cohibas right here, but they're small, you know. Which ones, which ones have you got there? So these are the, um, is this a Petit Crow? No, I always, you know, you can tell me. Um, take it up. Ah, are they the, um, I'm just trying to think now. I can't quite, I can't quite see them. They look like a, a very slimmer Lanceros, but... A, or... Yeah, I mean, you know... Does it sound the box? It doesn't sound the box, no. No, there's... Um, <laughs> there's a... well, they might be, they might, I, I, can't, I can't quite see them, but they look quite slim. No. Well, the Robusta is about... The Robusta and Supremos is about double the size of those to get... You know, they're, they're, a, they're a very sizable cigar. Uh -huh. So about... in, in diameter, like... Yeah, so you can see the tube there. Yeah. And you see how it fits in my hand? That's about the size of a Robusta Supremo. That's, that's an impressive size cigar. It, it, it is a colossal cigar. It is what, what, what we would say a Robusto on steroids. <laughs> um, and they are beautiful. The thing with a cigar of that size is, and the difficulty is, is getting something that you can light once and it just slowly ticks away. Mm -hmm. It has a beautiful ash on it, a nice white ash and a steady burn. And a, and a very even burn that goes through, uh, because what you don't want to do is you, you, you don't want to be lighting a cigar every, every every two minutes. You want it to just sort of burn evenly, and you you want to check a cigar for knots. And the the robusta supremos from Cohiba were superb in every possible way, in my view. The mm -hmm. draw was fantastic on them. The um, burn was fantastic. The flavour was fantastic. It, it just it was just a, a, a fabulous smoke. And they came out in 2014. I th they were £45 a stick when they first came out. Um, in certain places in London, they're now trading at £250 a stick. Wow. That's, uh... so they, they, you know, they, are a, they were a hefty investment if you'd, if you'd have put some away. I smoked all mine because they were too much. <laughs> and that's what they rely on. They rely on people smoking them so that they may, you know, there's only a finite number of them. So, mm -hmm. well, at the end um, of the day, that's what they're for, isn't it? Exactly. So, for me personally, the Cohiba Robusta Supremos is probably the one. Just a beautiful cigar. Oh, fantastic. I'll definitely look out for that one. And so, that sort of draws me on to another question I've literally just thought of. So, um, something like this, this punch here, which yep. isn't a, ma a particularly big diameter, but it's long. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I mean, maybe it's probably not as simple an answer as all that, but you know, length, diameter, what should you be looking at if you want a longer smoke and an enjoyable smoke? It's for a longer smoke for, for me, but for me personally, I would go for, uh, I mean, the punch there that you've got for, an, you wouldn't put that to a new cigar smoker. Punches are no, no, you know, usually very strong in, you know, full in flavor. They're quite a bold cigar. And they're for somebody that would smoke, um, cigars on a regular basis, and they've got mm. a they built a palate. They're a great cigar, mind. They're full of flavour. Um, that one there, I would say, perhaps an hour. 
Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, perhaps an hour in um, uh, in length, maybe a little bit more. So if you're used to it, you probably do a little bit. Uh, you probably do it a little bit quicker. Um, but in terms of if you're looking for something length, it's it's down to how you smoke. Mm -hmm. If you if you as I say, if you chuff cigars quite quickly and you almost chew them, <laughs> chew through them, you'll go through them quite quick. And it depends. It depends on how um, how quickly you do that and how quickly you want to smoke it. Um, you know, so you can make a cigar last as realistic. You know, with, with you know to a greater extent, you can make a cigar last as long as you like. Mm. Um, short, fat cigars will. Again, it's it's very it's very dependent on, on on what you want. But obviously, shorter they are, the quicker they are. Chunkier, the larger ring gauge on them, the longer they're going to take to smoke. Um, something like, I'm just going back to the Robusto Supremus, which I would say is is about that. It's about five and a bit inches uh, length. Mm. That would, you know, it's a very bold cigar. That would take a good, perhaps an hour, hour and twenty minutes to smoke. So it's down to the individual, really. If you if you're used to it, you'll you'll go through them quite quickly because you know what you're doing. If you're not used to it and not wanting to rush it because you don't want that sickly feeling, it will take you a little bit longer. That's fantastic. I mean, that's that's great advice, and I think people um, who are watching this are going to be um, feeling a lot more confident about about trying cigars. Um, you know, as, as a butler, and obviously my main audience here are, are butlers, uh, we, we buy cigars for people, and of course we light them for people. I've, I've lit hundreds of cigars and smoked relatively few. Um, you know, there's a technique, which I will be doing on another video, the technique of lighting a cigar for someone else. Um, what about yourself? Would, would you want me to light your cigar for you, or would you prefer to do the honours yourself? I mean, I mean it, it, it's 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 quite an it's quite an interesting one. Personally, I like the idea of lighting my cigar myself because I like it, it, it's all part of personally it's all part of that uh, that occasion. I like to pick the cigar. I like to look at the cigar. I like to check it for knots. You know, make sure that it's not it's not got any defects within the internals of the cigar. I like to have a look at it. I like to see what the wrapper's like and then I like to you know and, and then I like to go through the whole process of that myself so I mean in this instance here I don't tend to cut my cigars some people would call that sacrilege but I've got here which I don't know if you can see I don't know if my um uh, but on the top of my lighter mm. I have a little a little punch ah yeah the the okay. screw. so I personally um will punch my cigar Anyway, and then once of that, I like to light it myself because I like it, it's just part of the ritual of what you're used to. Anyway, I think it's quite it, it's quite an interesting thing that that um, some people may light a cigar for you. Um, I've had it, I've had it done, uh, and it's it's nice. And and quite often, the the person lighting it likes it better than you do. But but it's 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 a nice it's a nice part of the ritual for me to uh -huh. be able to light. And have a lighter there, and to continue, you know, and it just it just flows naturally. Um, but I know I I know other people that prefer other people prefer to have them lit for them. I see you you you've got the 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 pin for pricking, so um, that's interesting. So here I've got a couple of um, sort of um, cigar cutters. I've got this kind and this kind, and I was going to ask you what what would you say is the best kind? But you you you've already sort of I mean, answered that. I, I like the the little punch because it's just convenient. It's in the top of my light. I mean, you can see here if I, if I, I don't know if I can show you, but you can oh. see that lighter has had some wear and tear on it. it certainly has, yeah. It's, it was a gift from a from a friend, and it, I've had it for years. And it's it lights a bit funny sometimes. It may take a few sort of times to light, but when when it does, you know it. But um, so the but having the fact that it has a little punch in the top of it is just convenient for me, and it keeps you all nice and neat. I do, out of in all honesty, I do prefer a, a, a good clean guillotine um, cut across. 
because it helps with the draw. I mean, if your punch is a little bit blunt and you're jamming it into the back of a cigar, you run the risk of blocking some of the vents that are, you know, the, the actual draw vents in there um, that that are not, you know, that, that are made that the actual roller with all their years experience puts into the into the cigar to help that draw. So if you're jamming something in, unless it's really sharp, I mean, mine tends to be quite good actually. Um, you know, you, you run the risk of that. So, given the option, if 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 I'm just sat down and relax, I'll use a um, I'll use a, a guillotine guillotine cutter. But I noticed that you've got the scissors as well. I like yeah. the scissors. So just to show people what you mean by the scissors, like these. Yeah, yeah. So I think they're I think those. great. I like them. I, just, I I I. There's something about them that actually, you know, when you're cutting it, it's nice. But you, what I'm getting at essentially is is to take to to essentially scalp the the cigar is better in my view than to punch it. But sometimes when needs must, it's better than. I've even taken a. I've been out shooting, not got anything on me, and I've taken a, a knife and just <laughs> scored around the top before we did that. Commando style. Yeah, commando style. It makes me look manly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, that's 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 tends to be my preference. Well, that's absolutely. I mean, that's fantastic. So, are you um, are you going to light that one up now? We can yeah, I will that. actually. See you because... at work. So I've checked this cigar just for the reference for your uh, viewers. I've checked um, this um, cigar out before. Should be absolutely fine. I've checked it, I've looked at the wrapper. I always look at the wrapper on them just to see what it's like. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you'll get a vein from the, from the back of a leaf in there. And, but these, this, this here is a Romeo Giulietta Deluxe from 2013, so it's a limited edition. I tried to buy a box of them, but I only had, I, I only had um, let's see if I can bring this a little bit closer here. So it's, so I only have a, I, they only had two of them, my, my guys, but it's, um, yeah, I had them, but they're a special cigar. So I've looked at them, I've checked out for any knots or any potential issues in the cigar. It's not it's not the end of the world, but it just makes it a little bit of a trickier, trickier smoke. And what I'm gonna do what is I always use a, a buta well, a jet lighter. I don't use a the sort of standard petrol a fume lighter that you can get from anywhere because they don't burn at a high enough temperature and consequently uh, with the f fuel lighters, you will get um, a, a. How do you how do you how do I say it? You'll 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 ta you'll taint the cigar in the sense of with its with the fuel f um, fumes from the uh, the fluid basically. Mm -hmm. So um, they don't burn at a high enough temperature, so it it sort of taints the cigar, taints the flavour, and it takes you a little bit of time to get through that, which is not what you want. So with a jet lighter, it burns at a higher temperature and you know you don't get that residue equally. Some people I've seen um, have used candles. No, you, 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 know, you don't use that because often um, candles are treated with things like paraffin or whatnot. Uh -huh. And it, again, it ruins that, um, the, the, the flavor of the cigar. Um, sulfurless match with untreated wood, perfect, or um, as I say, a jet lighter. There's, there's no real alternative to, to that. Um, and um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I do notice, um, I have even lit it with, with, with the little, what they used to, they call them cigar lighters, don't they, in cars? But they don't oh, have yes, them anymore. Yeah. You know, that's not too bad either because it's just a heating element. So when I'm lighting the cigar, I'm not actually putting the flame on. I am just, I'm what we got. I'm, I'm doing what we call toasting that cigar. You know, so it's keeping it away, and I'm just toasting it. And it may take a, and I'm looking for a really solid red glow at the end of the cigar. You know, just so everything is uniform, so you know that everything has been um, lit nice and even. It may take a second. And this is the sort of ritual that a cigarette smoker just, just 
probably couldn't get their head around right now. Exactly. And I'm just just seeing how it's lit so that uh, on the end and you can see that even there it's not had a lot of heat at all but it's just burning just right just take it on that edge of there and there you go and it's just that getting getting the draw right and the first and the first couple of draws just to just to get it going now, I must say, you made that look very easy. And over the years, I've seen a lot of people make it look very, very, very hard. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's just experience. Well, you, yeah, you, 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 I've, lit, I've lit my fair share of cigars. But the trick to it, I find, is rotating the cigar in your fingers. So, so, that you're, so that one part of the cigar is not exposed to the flame for the whole duration you know you're toasting you're getting it you know the hot element of the the of the of the see what i mean isn't what yeah <laughs> the, the, the hottest part of the flame isn't focused on one part of the cigar all the time and consequently i've got a beautiful even burn there it's you know it's the the, the ember at the end is nice and nice and hot across the, the whole surface of the cigar. Uh, the, uh, so, yeah, this should be absolutely spot on. Fantastic. So, so t tell me a bit about your, your cigar. Well, tell the people at home a bit about the uh, cigar you're smoking there. What, what's, it, what's it taste like? How would you describe it? So the um, Romeo Giuletto, it's, it's 2013 Deluxe. Um, these, the, obviously, these came out sort of 2013 so they're a seven year old what have we on now 2020 about a seven year old cigar so this has been this has been rested for some time so the tobacco in it and the tobacco beforehand will have will have been picked specifically for this um this this line of cigar anyway so the tobacco is aged nicely it's about as i say it's about a seven year old cigar um so the flavor uh, flavors on there will be much more complex than you know, a, a standard Romeo Giulietta, wine Churchill, short Churchill, you know, the, the tobacco will be different. Mm -hmm. People think that the darker the wrapper, the more intense the flavour. It's not always the case. It's, it is down to the filler, what the, um, what the cigar uh, roller has put, it, put in there and how they put that in. So the flavours will develop over the course of the cigar um, in terms of... Um, you know the notes that you'll get through there and the interesting thing with 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 cuban cigars let's look at um let's look at obviously we're looking at cuban specifically but i can just draw on the new worlds in terms of the flavor notes uh, and the, 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 the tasting notes is you have got cigars from cuba that haven't got the investment um, the, the, you know, in, in the farming investment that the New World cigars have. And that's primarily because of the American market. When the Americans left, um, were no longer able to buy Cuban cigars. Forgive me, sorry. <laughs> um, they, there was obviously n there's little investment because of the nature of Cuba as a country. So when they uh, nourish, try and nourish the soil to grow the, t the, the tobacco plants on there, they um, nourish the soil with anything that they can get. So it might be pistachio um, nuts that, 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 that they've got. They got, might have a little bit of chocolate or some vanilla pods. So you'll get things like that that are, that are quite, a, quite a complex flavor in themselves. Whereas you'll, you'll probably get with the, the New World cigars more flavor because of the infrastructure that's going in there. So you may get hints of berries or uh, a much more sort of um, prominent flavors in there because they've got they've got the money to invest stuff and uh, to invest in the in the farming system and pump more um, you know to put more put, put different things in the soil that will enhance the flavors of them. But with a Cuban cigar, you will tend to get like this. You'll get coffee notes, coffee and coffee beans that may have been in there. You you may pick up the uh, you know a much creamier texture and the complex the the, the um, tasting notes of a Cuban cigar, I find, are, tend to be a lot more complex um, than 
um, New World cigars. And actually, I prefer that personally. Um, it's a nicer, no, it's a nicer, smoother, easier smoking cigar. Whereas a New World cigar, you'll tend to get a little bit more bite with. So if you inter interject the two, you know, you have Cuban cigars and then you occasionally mix in a, a New World cigar, you get a bit more of a bite and it's an interesting comp experience. Wow. That's, I mean, it's incredible to hear all the detail that you're giving about the cigars. And I tell you what, I'm, I'm champing at the bit to, um, to smoke a cigar. I've got to go outside later and smoke one. But um, people at home who want to buy some cigars, who want to experience this whole um, world of cigars, what should they do? There are, there are plenty of brilliant, brilliant online sites, um, you know, that you can, particularly during lockdown, that you can go on. And, and pick up some cigars very easily on. Um, I, if you're new to cigars and you're wanting to give it a, give it a try, you know, as you say, if, it, if it's a, a student of yours that wants to get onto cigars and try them before they go into the, into the actual, into the profession and start advising clients or, or, you know, in an environment where clients are used to cigars, I'd first of all start off watching a few YouTube videos. There's some brilliant videos out there. Um, and looking at how they light them and, and, and picking a cigar. Then have a look at some of the websites. Um, and, you know, you can mail order, particularly given the current climate, mail order cigars are, are huge at the moment. Uh, I mean, what I found is, is that I'm, uh, I'm constantly approached, particularly through the shooting world, um, sorry, um, particularly through the shooting world, with people who want to enjoy a cigar on a shoot day and they say to me well look we're new to this what do we do what what do we buy and i'll give them advice on that and it's actually during lockdown it's been so prolific that i've decided that over the course of the next week or so i'm going to open a little sort of private group uh private little club um and i'm going to which is called the the, the scotch and stogie club so it's just oh. and then i'll be at um, scotch and stogie i mean you know <laughs> And, and the whole point there is, is actually to work with, um, with people that are new to cigar smoking who are expressed an interest in it and advise them on what, you know, how to light, how to pick a cigar, you know, so that they can get the most enjoyment and not necessarily have to spend the fortunes that cigar smoking is, um, is often tarred with. It is expensive, but if you're an occasional cigar smoker, you know, that's, that's, that's the process I would go through. Look at some videos on YouTube, look at some of the online web websites, or as I say, I can send you a link at once. I've got my um, little sort of gathering and little forum together where it will again, predominantly be um, people that are new to cigar smoking. And it will be a sort of very informal chat through each month, maybe a, a video, um, and a, a sort of um, tasting of different cigars, you know, that, that, are, that start off at a modest budget and we can go right the way up. That sounds like an absolutely fantastic idea. We're going to have to make sure that, I think we're going to have loads of people asking for that link. So we'll have to make sure that we um, um, publish that for people as soon as you've got it. Um, so anyone that's watching this and wants that link, I'll try and put it in with the uh, video so you can get to it. Um, it'll be on the, on the YouTube description underneath as soon as I've got it. Um, and uh, we'll make sure people can, I mean, I, mean, I, I want to sign up for that right now and I'm sure everyone else does. So that sounds brilliant. Well, hopefully um, I'll, I'll, it'll be up and running fairly soon. I'm just gonna, I'm just re notice that the lighting is getting a little bit pale there. Can you see me okay? Uh -huh. I mean, you've been mood lighting, shall we say. You've been like a Humphrey Bogart film right through, but it, it kind of adds to the ambience. You can, just, you can just see this sort of silhouette of, and, and the occasional ember from the cigar and some smoke. So, yeah. yeah it's, I'm going to have to put some jazz music over the top. Just to <laughs> sort of, you know. Yeah, well, so uh, hopefully you can see me enough anyway. But, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, uh, you know, the, the basics of what I would say. You know, watch some videos. See how people see how people who are in the industry um, really, you know, get get to grips and explain the cigars and why they pick them. Have a look online. You know, there'll be star. I, I don't want to. I, I don't like using the same uh, phrase starter packs per se, but there will be um, 
sort of packs for people that, that are new to cigars that um, you can try out you know milder flavored cigars and different sizes and you can try what you know see what fits um, and um, because as, 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 as with these sort of things not you know one size doesn't fit all um, and then yeah I'll, I'll, I'll put my little group on and it'll be an interesting little discussion for them really well, wow, that's absolutely brilliant. And I'm, I'm really hoping, um, obviously we're coming to the end of our time now, but um, I'm really hoping I can entice you back to, to chat to everyone again, um, give a few more details of that and um, sort of keep people in touch with the cigar world. So I know I'll put you on the spot, but can we uh, have you back again as well? I'd, I'd come back anytime, anytime, because it gives me an excuse to smoke more cigars. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So yeah, no, more than happy to. Well, um, unless you've got anything else you wanted to, to tell everyone before we sign off. Um, I, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll end it on a, on, a, on a bit of advice. Never rush your cigar. That's the only thing. Smoke it, take your time with it, enjoy it with something, you know, after a nice, um, a nice dinner, nice glass of something, but never rush your cigar. Just take your time. If a, if a cigar that's designed to take 20 minutes takes you an hour but you enjoy it that's that's all that matters it's not it's not it's not it's not a sport so you know just take it it's it, it's a it's a pleasure that we don't get you know we don't often get to enjoy too much i mean i smoke them a little bit more than most but you know it's um and it's and it everyone is a sense of occasion it's like it's it, it's like opening a bottle of wine you know that pop of the cork is exactly the same as lighting it like you know that that first click of the lighter and from that moment on enjoy it you know don't rush it um and you know it, it'll bring you great pleasure well that's absolutely fantastic that's good advice thank you very much so um don't rush a cigar so that was nathan little so remember that name this is the um, the man for cigars uh, it was a great pleasure to have him with us tonight now if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see some other videos, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be posting a lot more. If you want to um, contact Nathan, ask him any questions, please do that via the channel here. Put your comments on. I make sure I read all of them and I'll pass them across to him. And if you want to hear about his fantastic club, which is coming up, which I'm sure you will, again, just put it on the channel. And I'll make sure that he gets back in contact with you. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Nathan. Damien, thank you very much for having me. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Right.